If you like this video, click like. If you want to continue to follow our adventure, hit subscribe. Your support would be greatly appreciated. Hello, Miles on the Road subscribers and followers. Well, you know what today is, don't you? Yep, it's Friday. You know what that means, don't you? Yes, I know you know what it means. It's Easy Five Friday. Today's topic is yeah, self-defense. Um, now, I, I, before I get into this, I want to be clear that I have tried very hard not to get into political or controversial subjects. Um, first of all, uh, YouTube doesn't like it too much, and they like to demonetize things that get too to, that, that would scare off advertisers. So, I'm going to work very hard to not take a position on, on any of this. Um, those of you that come to my live feed, and shameless plug, uh, which is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on YouTube, on my channel, uh, and you're more than welcome to join us. Anyway. They know that I try very hard not to talk about politics. As a matter of fact, if you ask a political question on my channel and it becomes a repetitious thing, I will. YouTube has a, a way of me putting you in the corner for a few minutes so you can't ask any more questions. Uh, but I, I, I don't like talking about it. The reason I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to make a couple of videos, one about self-defense and one about firearms and, and all that stuff, is because... First of all, people have asked the question, and I've tried to avoid the question, just like I tell you on live feed, I, I try to avoid it and try to avoid it, but I got to thinking about it. We are camping, and things could go wrong. And I, my whole job is to tell you what kind of things that we need to prepare for in, in your dream, whatever that dream is. I'm not talking about pop-up camping, but that's the only thing I know, so that's the only thing I can talk about. Secondly, as a lot of you know, we are back in Missouri, um, right next to my the town that I lived in before we started this adventure. And anybody who's watched any of my videos for any length of time knows that I was robbed twice in my stick and brick. So this might be a good time to talk about self-defense and, and personal defense. So anyway, I'm going to get started on this and try to just take a even keel, no top fives, no number ones, nothing like that. I'm going to talk about number one, bear spray. Bear spray actually is, isn't a horrible idea. Many people have suggested it, and it serves two purposes. One, bears. Uh, in a national forest, uh, in some national forest, let me explain, on the east side, uh, bears can be a problem. I have not actually seen one in the campsite, but they always tell you to have bear spray and watch what you're doing. There's all these rules. Uh, but secondly, bear spray wouldn't be a bad um, self-defense method. Someone would come into your camper, and that's what we're talking about, is coming into your camper. Yeah, it's going to knock you out too, but boy, I mean, it's going to knock the bad guy out. So, uh, now, again, use this based on your own knowledge of the, of the thing. Don't use anything that you're not trained to use. Um, because bear spray, if you sprayed yourself in the face... Or got your camper full of bear spray and it was in your eyes could you withstand the pain long enough to escape and that's the key see so there was an advantage to this there's two advantages one you can use it on the bad guy and two you can use it on bears but if you get it on yourself are you going to you know incapacitate yourself so the advantages what I just mentioned and the disadvantages you could incapacitate yourself and the bad guys incapacitated which one of you is going to recover first, you or the bad guy? And you would hope it's not the bad guy. The thing about bear spray is, is you can endure it with the proper training. I haven't had the training, so I'm not going to tell you that I can do it. I, uh, I had to go through, you know, the gas chamber in boot camp, and it was terrible. Terrible! So, I don't know if I actually could resist a bear spray in my face, but uh, that's what I got. Number two. Now... This isn't an actual take the bad guy to down type of, of self-defense. This is a, a more passive way if, you, if you're not into uh, you know, violence, and I can understand that. Uh, if you're not into violence and you want to take a passive approach and hope to scare the bad guy away, 
um, make sure you have your 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 uh, remote for your car alarm. If you can hit that emergency squealer, your car alarm will go off. Hopefully that will draw attention. Everybody, of course, is going to be coming in your direction. Um, and it may scare the bad guy off. And that's going to work really well. So the advantage is it's going to work really well if, if you use it in a populated campsite where you have people around that can come to your rescue or call 911 or help you out, whatever. Or just make people nervous, the bad guy nervous to uh, want to leave because he knows people are coming. The disadvantage of this one is if you stay like we do in National Forest where there's nobody around for miles, nobody's going to hear it. And so there is a risk. The bad guy is going to know that there's nobody around. So that thing can go off for days and nobody would come around. So it wouldn't do any good, or at least potentially wouldn't do any good. Of course, there's always that fear of the bad guy, you know, the bad guy having his own fear about getting caught or hurt. So it may make him run away, but uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tr totally trust it out in the national forest. Number three. Again, I want to talk about that you have to have training to do these kind of things. Uh, I can't tell you to use any type of weapon or you know, bear spray or anything without, uh, without having some training. So if you're going to go get one of these things or use one of these things, make sure you have enough knowledge to use it. But number three, I would say use a knife. Uh, I do know a lot of people that carry an army knife or a marine knife. Heck, even a butcher knife. Keep it by your bed and at least get the guy in pain. Now, a lot of people uh, would think that you're just going to stab and stab and stab. Uh, you may want to consider, again, with training to, to you know, hurt them where they can't hurt you. You know, cut their arm. You know, you're not, not necessarily want to kill anybody. If you're going to have to do self-defense, that may not be the cho choice. That's not what you're trying to do. Self-defense means you're just trying to stop the bad guy from hurting you. So instead of trying to kill the guy, which is going to take several time, you know, t terrible minutes, and who wants to talk about all that? You know, cut cut an elbow so they can't attack you, or maybe you know behind the leg. Um, again, I don't have training in this. Number four, uh, a taser. Again, when I mention this, I want you to be very clear that I am not suggesting you go out and buy a taser. I am suggesting that you go get the proper training to use a taser and make sure that is the, the method that you want to use. Uh, it's less lethal um, uh, and it may stop a, a, per, a bad guy long enough for you to escape and that's the key. That's what I keep trying to tell you in each one of these is you want to be able to escape, get away. Um, we're not talking about killing someone. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about your safety. Um, so. Make sure that, that if you're going to use a taper, taser, you, you're trained to use it and that you're using it on the bad guy long, correctly so you can escape. Number five, and this is the one that I'm really worried about even bringing up because I'm so worried that people are going to get all, you know, controversial and, and uh, uh, NRA and all that, but uh, the, the firearms. Look. Here's the thing about firearms, and I know a lot of people carry firearms, and that's your, your right. I have, can't say anything against it, can't say anything for it, because that's not what I'm trying to do here. What I'm trying to do is give you the options. Firearms, I would suspect, are a good method to protect yourself. Um, and I, again, trying to be very careful here. And it can help you get to safety, get away from the bad guy. Uh, any type of self-defense thing you, you watch, they always talk about this, this factor where fudge, I've been shot. And they'll, they'll run away because they've been shot. Uh, I did my homework on this a little bit before I actually uh, made this video. So, you know, great. They're running away, you're running away, and you're safe. That's great. Now, of course, this is a more lethal method than anything I've mentioned so far. Uh, but here, here's the thing. So there's some advantages to a firearm. The disadvantages to a firearm, especially in a pop-up or camper tent, is 
twofold. One, you're not allowed to shoot firearms in a national forest, at least some national forest. Um, the ones in Virginia and West Virginia, they were very clear you could not discharge a firearm, which is a real problem if you're discharging for self-defense. And I'm not going to get into the legal aspects of all that. I'm just telling you what the National Forest says. You are not allowed to discharge a firearm. Okay, so that's all in good. The second disadvantage to a firearm in a uh, pop-up is bullets don't necessarily just stop when you shoot them. Uh, shoot, shoot, shoot somebody. They can penetrate and go through uh, that person, which means now you have a bullet traveling through a campsite. And if you're in a populated campsite, how many campers is that bullet going to go through? Which caliper are you using? The stronger the caliper, I would think, or the, the different types of weapons, the more more penetration you're going to have. Um, so, yeah, I would say that the guns are very effective in self-defense, but they can also cause a lot of problems uh, because of legality issues. Um, the other thing is, is while we're traveling, I've noticed that many states won't even let you travel through their state. We were in Virginia, and I was looking all this up when I was doing my research. We were in Virginia. We could not have went to Pennsylvania because Maryland won't let you through they just you can't have a gun going through maryland so uh, it, it really restricts your travel also anyway i really hope that i've done this in a way that makes sense where we're not you know making this a controversial subject but more of an educational subject on how to defend yourself in a uh in a pop-up camper so hope that makes sense Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Click like if you like the video. And happy travels.